Folks, I'm back. I'm coming. I'm coming. It's time for another episode of Rudy Talks to You Through a Shelf. How you guys doing? So again, uh, dealing with Hurricane. Everything's closed in the whole city here in uh, Florida. So I'm just uh, hanging out in the warehouse moving boxes and talking to you all through a shelf. And uh, I wonder how much this has gone down recently. Pokemon Furious Fist. This thing's probably dropped, what, 50% in the last three months? All right. So, you know, Cardfight Vanguard, this is something... I've actually been having conversations about literally kind of changing the business model. And I wonder how many people... I wonder how many people would be upset if I just literally, like, in 2022, cut off all Magic product and did... And brought on, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Van and carried every card game except Magic. I wonder how many people would be angry. Ah, I'm just kidding. I'm just joshing you. Nah, I'm just joshing you. Okay. So, today's video is about my opinion of the current direction of Wizards of the Coast with Amazon. I will forewarn you all, this is going to be a pretty Rudy opinionated... Probably, uh... Could get a little escalated, and we can get a little uh, viewer discretion is advised type thing. So let's let's get let's just get all the information out right up front. As we know, Wizards continues to expand their relationship with Amazon Direct. Now, when I say Amazon Direct, I mean yes, you can go on Amazon, and yes, there are LGSs selling sealed product on Amazon. But I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to the official Wizards of the Coast Magic the Gathering official Amazon store, which is fulfilled with direct full size pallets. Direct, I believe most of them come from the Direct Texas Warehouse, direct to Amazon Fulfillment within the United States. So pretty much, Wizards prints a bunch of stuff in Texas, they wrap up the pallet, slap a thing on it, freight truck comes, be able to, you know, slap up the paperwork, and it goes right to Amazon Fulfillment, goes in the inventory of Amazon, and then Wizards sells direct to the consumer. So there you go. I'm not referring to the LGSs that are actually trying to unload a dead inventory or flip things on eBay or in Amazon and TCG. I'm, not, I'm specifically talking about the company who's printing the cards, selling direct to the customers, bypassing the entire ecosystem of the 3,000 stores around the country who are using, you know, game space, table space, distributors, you know, locking in and taking risk with, you know, locking in commitments months in advance, no matter if the product's good or bad, that, you know, all the, the intangibles. But anyways... I just want to tell you all where I think things are going. And I'm also going to tell you all, I really, really want to be wrong. I hope everything I say in this video turns out to be false, and you guys just make fun of me and bash me on the internet for the next 10 years. That's essentially what I want to happen. So here we go. I believe Wizards learned in 2020 that they can hit record sales without having GP Pro Tours, Magic Fest, what was it, uh... M MPWs, MPLs, NPCs, whatever it is. NPC? No, that's the non-playable character. I've been watching too many YouTube memes. Uh, the All these Magic Pro Leagues. They realize they can cut all the fat, they can give Channel Fireball events the middle finger, and they can still make record sales. Right? Isn't, isn't that what essentially Wizards figured out? So essentially they realize, hey, we don't need to have and incur all these expenses. We can trim all that fat. Produce tons of products, print, 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 money machine goes burr, and we can still have record profit, profits for Papa Hasbro. Okay. I believe that was a huge eye-opener. It, it was a collateral, it was a side effect of the 2020 world events. Okay. I also believe, no matter what anyone wants to say, and I believe Wizards' actions, not what they say, not the stores, not the WPN, I don't care what the verbatim and the press releases, I'm going to go strictly by the actions I see happening. The actions are as follows. Time Spiral Remastered was a huge turning point. Commander Legends Collector Boxes was a huge turning point. Commander Legends Collector Boxes was the first product that stores were cut off, and Wizards literally sent thousands direct to Amazon. Now, I understand why. And if I was a corporate ivory tower suit guy with a real job and actually went somewhere instead of sitting in the basement eating you know, ramen noodle soup every night... I would do the same thing. Because you have to understand, the people making these decisions are compensated probably with Hasbro stock. They need the stock to go up. By doing that, there's two ways. You need more revenue, and you need more profit. Or you need to reduce expenses to expand your margin. One or the other. If you have compressing margins, 
Wall Street gets pissed. You have declining revenue, Wall Street gets pissed. Doesn't matter what your one-time write-off goodwill, all this dumb crap is. All they care about is margins and future value of cash flows, all that dumb financial crap with fancy letters, lingos, and fancy letters after your name. That's all they care about. Okay? Now, with that being said, with Commander Legends Collector Box, let's start here. Wizards learned very quickly that wholesale, um, Commander Legends, was that a regular price collector box? I think it was a regular price collector box. So let's say Wizards sells the regular price collector box to distributor ABC. Okay, distributor ABC says, awesome. Okay, Wizards gets paid, I have no idea, $150 per Commander Legends collector box. Distributor pays them $150 a box. Distributor turns around, let's say they sell the Commander Legends collector boxes for, I don't know, a 180. Let's just keep the numbers real even and round. So then the distributor makes $30 gross margin on all those boxes times thousands. They make a ton of money, distributor's happy, it goes to all the stores. The stores get it for 180 they go online at the time. I think collector boxes were like 230 to 260 bouncing around. So the stores make the same thing. They make some margin, either opening it, flipping it, selling the single, selling the part, whatever it is. Then the collect Commander Legends collector boxes go to the moon, diamond hands go to $400 a box. Right? So then Wizards goes, oh, should we release the rest of our Commander Legends collector boxes from our Amazon fulfillment warehouse secret location? So in Texas, they give them, the phone rings, send it off to Amazon. So now they have 5,000 collector boxes. Instead of selling to the distributor and putting it to the food chain and the distributor giving Wizards $150 a box, they can turn around, put it direct to market, put it right on Amazon for, I don't know, $250 a box. So immediately, Wizards of the Coast has taken the same product that they were going to receive $150 for and they will receive $250 maybe 230 net Amazon, whatever. Who's it? I'm sure they have a special agreement with Amazon with discounted fees and rates. That's how Amazon, eBay, TCG play, they all have special backroom deals, giggity. So let's assume they have a special deal. So now instead of Wizards getting $150 a box, going through the normal take care of the whole network and ecosystem that made magic, blah, blah, blah. I know I sound like an old guy, rah, 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 Rudy, you're upset. You can't get a piece of the pie, rah, rah, rah. Okay, they're able to go from $150 to $250 for the same product. So they were able to expand the margin by almost 100%. And that was literally the aha moment. The aha moment, folks. That was, I feel, one of the biggest aha moments a year ago. And then case study number two came out. Time Spiral Remastered came around. And Wizards sold them all to what I, I don't even, uh, one... I don't know, 100 and something to distributors, stores got them for uh, 150, 140. I sold mine for 189, blah, blah, blah. Price spikes to 3, 350. People bought them, are happy. They're out of print, can't get any more. And then Wizards releases the Hounds and dumps thousands of boxes of Times Priority Master, which was the second wave, just like every other Master set and everything that's come out in the past, straight to Amazon. And they put them on Amazon for 250 to 300. So now Wizards, instead of getting, oh god, I don't know, $100 a box from a distributor, are now getting two to $300 a box. The margin expansion is 100 to 200%. Now again, not financial advice, dude in a basement, wearing no pants, eating Taco Bell, by myself, talking to the other bobs behind the camera. I'm not, dude, you want real advice? Talk to someone who knows what the hell they're talking about. But I'm just saying, if I am a shareholder of Hasbro, I own a couple hundred shares in just Hasbro, just myself. My family also has Hasbro positions. I can tell you that that is very bullish for the future value of the stock because you're going to create tremendous expansion in revenue and expansion in net product. The margins are going to expand based on how you're moving your the, the item you're selling around. Okay, so do I agree with it? No, I think this is this is like the beginning of a long 5, 10, 20 year path that will eventually be the end of distribution and LGSs into the future of our society. I believe Wizards' short-term gains in their decision-making will continue to squeeze and be the end of LGSs and large stores relying on Magic the Gathering and Wizards of the Coast. Okay, And trust me, the big effing companies know it. You don't think Channel Snowball? Okay, fine. You don't think Channel Fireball? With the, the weird things happening with them, that's all I can legally say. You don't think Star City? You don't think some of these trolls and toads? Card Kingdom? 
You don't think these big companies know what the hell is going on? Look at their damn inventory. Look at how many standard cards they're stocking. Look at the position of exposure they are keeping with Wizards of the Coast. Look at the cash flow. Follow the fucking money. Look at what's in stock. These guys know. I'm telling you, they know. They know, they know. And they're already making moves. Follow the smart money, people. Follow the whales. Look at what's going on. Look at the companies. Sir, go to the websites. Where's the singles? Who's stocking standard? Why do these companies only keep a couple cases in stock and they just get rid of it? What's going on? Hmm, kind of suspicious. Huh, let me go down to the basement and ask Lumberg. Maybe he knows what's going on. I don't know. I don't know what's... You, get, you guys get the point. Trust me, the smart money knows where we're going. It's happening. Okay? So, this Amazon future direction... Wizard is going to eventually make it in the next 5-10 years where the LGS thing is dead to them. I don't give a shit what this WPN and we want to do that. No! Look at the actions. I don't care what kind of smiley face on Twitter. And We're here for the community. We're going to do charities and stand up for different groups and things. Dude, the smoke and mirrors. Look what they're doing. Look what... They are only in the position... Because of the network of thousands of stores that built the game and the people who went and played and went and tables and tournaments and these events, look what's going on. Don't look at the smoke and mirrors and the social medias and all this stuff and who's approved, who's not approved, who's sensitive, who's not. That's all Fugazi. The suits behind the scenes are just sitting there going, <laughs> look at these Timmies. Look at them all getting excited because we're doing a charity event. Look at over here. Hey, hey, Bob. Hey, hey, do, do this over here. Let, hey, let's do a secret lair for any form of special event or holiday that comes up. Dude, we are going to look like we care about everybody. And then behind the scenes, they are swimming Scrooge McDuck in these margins. And they are in the process of evolving into the, the largest evolutionary change of this card game in the last 30 years. It's a one-way street, and it's going to be a bumpy ride, folks. And you, these, and the, and the big dogs and the people in the know, they already know. They've known for a couple years. Look at the data. I don't care what people are saying. I don't care what they're posting online. I don't care who's in the approved community. It doesn't, it's, it's, it's literally intentional misdirection, folks. Amazon is Wizards of the Coast future. The entire, there is going to be a day when literally every new magic set is, and actually, I'll take it a step further. You guys really want me to slap you across the taco? I'll take it a step further. I believe Wizards and the Scale Fast and these other companies are going to engineer an even bigger website that is a literally eventually going to funnel from Amazon to that. I think eventually they even cut Amazon out. Well, maybe not because that would Amazon will do all the legwork and returns and everything. I don't know. That I just feel like like the secret layer in Amazon thing is the entire direction that they want because they can expand all the margins, scrap all everybody out. All the stores, the stores and this whole LGS model and this whole thing about what made them, they don't give two fucks, people. They are, so, you guys, and it just, it blows my mind that people in the Timmies are like, yes, cards are cheap. I'm happy. Oh my God. Who, oh, that store is scum. Amazon's $1.75 cheaper. You, you guys are so wound up in the noise and the smoke. You don't see the empire being built behind the curtain. And, and most people, they're not going to realize all this until it's too late. Now, is this going to ruin magic? No. Is this going to make magic fail or Hasbro go down? No, it's not. I'm just telling you all that just be aware there are thousands of small businesses in the United States. Okay? And tens of thousands around the world that are in this infrastructure that pay all this overhead, that host tournaments. I don't even host tournaments. I haven't done that crap in years. Why? Because I didn't see the value. Because I knew... Now again, if we were in a different direction, if this was still pre-2013, when Modern Masters 1 came out, 
And in order for me to get Modern Masters 1, you had to be WPN stored, you had to host tournaments, be a part of the Wizards Play Network, and there was still respect in the system, and they gave out actual player rewards and promos? Well, shit. Okay. All right. All right. Then you know what? If that's how you value it, it's special. I respect that. Let's go the path. Let's, let's follow the rules. But we're not in that. We're not in that. And I'm telling you, the funny thing about life is when you take extravagant money, greed-like directions that are on a whole different path, the funny thing about the people who make decisions and flow in that direction is they're unable to see the collateral damage. And the collateral damage is going to be significant. And the collateral damage of the cockiness in the margins in the people of that kind of level, it, it's going to come for them. And I don't know if it's going to come in the way of all these other new card games that are coming. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to come in the way of just, like I said, comp new competition rising up and just taking a bite out of them. Because remember, when you move that big of a Goliath in this direction, there's a big void over here of everybody who's going, we were all used to this, now it's gone. I mean, kind of weird. Channel Fireball Events, who hosted all these magic tournaments, comes to an end, immediately, Flesh and Blood starts launching the largest pro tour professional scene all over the United States and around the world with record player signups every day. Unbelievable numbers. And I'm going, wow, kind of strange when I thought big events and tournaments and players and I didn't think that mattered. Kind of weird. We'll see who's right, who's wrong. Because no matter how I feel, you feel, the data is going to come out and it's going to show who's right or wrong. And I'm sitting here going, remember, when you do these things, you will have side effects. A yin and a yang. The teeter-totter always balances. Wealth is not created in thin air. Money does not just fall from Rudy's money tree. I planted it. Nothing grows. Things are transferred. Money is transferred. Wealth is transferred. Assets are moved around. Inflation and demand change the value of these categories. It doesn't appear. In these directions, in this middle finger attitude of Amazon, in Wizards, Wizards foresees a future. Now this right here, I'm going to tell you right now, did not come from a guy who works at Wizards. This next speech I'm going to say, did not come from anyone who works at Wizards. I made this up right here on the third floor basement warehouse underneath Florida. I'm just making this next part up right now. Wizards wants to have Secret Lair be 10 to 25% of the entire revenue of Wizards of the Coast. They want to have another chunk of the revenue. Literally, they want over 50% of the company's revenue to come from Amazon. That's up to 75% of all magic sales. Wizards literally handpicking cards in the secondary market and selling them for the market. They're literally going to print an exact card and sell it for 50 bucks type thing. And then they want to literally move pallets into a warehouse and just have a company just ship it all over. And that's the future, folks. That's what's happening. There's going to be more remastered sets. We're going to have a Kamigawa remastered. We're going to have all kinds of other remastered. We're going to have all those Dark Steel Future Sight Plan Arcade. We're going to have more remastered. I think one of few, whatever, you get the idea. The point is, they see the methods of making all this money. You know, and you know, just to piss some people off, we'll bring a reserve list. And it cracks me up that Timmy's like, oh, this proves, you know, they're going to reprint the reserve list because they, you know, they just want all the money. You, know, you see the Timmy say that stuff, it cracks me up. And, you know, these guys in these suits, have identified endless, it's endless design and reprint space to make endless amounts of money without breaking reserve lists or doing anything dramatic. They don't need to. There's no, there's no reason to. If I present you with two piles of a million dollars and I say, well, this one takes 30 days and you got to make this product and sell it. This one, you just reprint something really old but piss off people and there's a legal issue, but you can make a million dollars instantly. You're going to take the, a, a professional money manager always takes the path of least risk, not the path of most gain. And I know that's a very simplified, terrible example, but you get the concept. That's the difference between a Timmy and a professional money manager who does risk management for a living. I think I'm done rambling. This is this video is, I don't even, this is a ridiculous video. Sorry for those of you actually still watching this long. The point is, folks, 
I just want to be on record, so it's on YouTube. Hopefully it stays there. You guys understand what I feel, where I feel things are going, and why I feel we are going to get there. And a lot of stores and a lot of undercapitalized stores and a lot of mom and pop or LGSs all over the country are going to get annihilated. Because there are, I would say there's at least a thousand stores in the United States alone that rely on Magic the Gathering Wizards of the Coast to keep their lights on. That's all I got.